And good afternoon. Welcome to Life Unrehearsed. My name is Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in life transitions, home care, and the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist specializing in grief and loss. Coming up on today's show, speaking of grief and loss, men and women differ in many ways, but does gender matter in the way we deal with grief and loss? You may be surprised. We're going to be addressing this topic shortly. But first, Corey, I wanted to get your opinion. You know, the, the pandemic rules and protocols, are, they're winding down slowly but surely. It's a some feels like a sense of liberation. I, this week, though, I wanted to get your opinion. I, I was at a, a get-together with some colleagues, about six right. of us, and we went through the whole gamut. There was the hug from one person. Mm-hmm. There was a handshake <laughs> from another right. person. There was like a fist bump and an elbow right, bump. Right. And then there was yeah. the other was a not don't even bother touching me. And it, I just I, I sat back and I said, look at this dynamic that probably many, right. many people are going through. It's very strange. It's it's a, it's what we're talking about constantly about a new normal, which I use with grief and loss. But I think it very much applies to how do we navigate a world uh, in COVID, sort of moving towards the post-COVID, I find it fascinating that people were desperate to get the these restrictions lowered and be able to do things. And now I'm speaking to people and they're doing, they're saying, oh, we, we don't have to show our vaccine. Oh, no more masks in school. Oh, so I don't know what we want, but I, I we know, know that this is a time that we're really going to have to check in with ourselves and be patient and tolerant of each other about what comfort level each of us has. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. And, and, and you're right. You know, we got to go through this together. I have to say, though, it is it is liberating. And, and uh, I think many uh, people that I talk to are feeling a little bit more relieved that uh, things are uh, opening up. The sunlight mm-hmm. is lasting a little longer and uh, we're heading in, in the right direction. Just got to get rid of these snowstorms now, Corey. <laughs> right. Um, any connections? Um, all right. What do we have coming up on the second half? On the second half, aging in place has become more popular during the pandemic. Let's face it, more people are staying at home much longer. But given that, are we making the necessary modifications to our home so that we can age in place safely? Well, on our segment in Helping Moms and Dads, we're going to discuss this. That's coming up after the 3.30 news. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I actually wrote an article that was just published this week in the Suburban on this very topic. So uh, looking forward to talking about that. All right. What we first want to talk about is gender differences in grieving. And um, we're actually going to bring Corey um, in this conversation and a gentleman, Gary Sturgis. Uh, They are two of the presenters at a professional development workshop entitled Gender Differences in Loss and Bereavement. It's on March 10th. It's organized by Myra's Kids Foundation. You've heard Corey talk about that great foundation. And uh, so we're going to start it off with Corey. We'll bring Gary on in the second quarter. But many of you know Corey, uh, my amazing co-host. She is a grief and bereavement specialist in her day job and one of the best in Montreal, I might add. Uh, And she's the author of a great book. uh, I've read it. It's called Someone Died, Now What? An excellent, I guess, call it from the street level, Corey. It's a great book. And uh, I want to welcome you to this uh, segment. Thank you so much, Matt. Um, All right. So it's funny. um, I've talked to a few people this week that were talking about uh, how men and women do things differently and even in grieving. So do men and women actually grieve differently? So I'm going to give you the short answer. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) The question is not, do they all? Not necessarily. It is very specific, more so to your background in loss and grief, your, uh, how family spoke about it, how you, your comfort level, your temperament, your personality. So there's a lot of factors at play, Mm -hmm. but definitely it was definitely the motivation for offering this workshop is recognizing doing groups for men and uh, with all exclusively people who identify as men and people who identify as women doing these support groups. I noticed that there's a different kind of approach one needs to have when working with the different genders. It's very interesting. So let's hear some real examples. How how do women in grieve differently? Can you give us uh, some real examples? So it really breaks down quite simply to two kinds of grievers, intuitive versus instrumental grievers. And this is a term that was coined by Kenneth Doka and Terry 
um, Martin, and they talk about the fact that an intuitive griever is someone who experiences grief mainly in terms of their feelings and their emotions. They say, I feel sad or I feel angry. And their grief response is usually focused on exploring and expressing these emotions. I cried all night I, or I got so mad I couldn't think. That's the intuitive griever. And we typically see them as more female attributes, whereas the instrumental griever is this person who experiences grief in a more physical and a cognitive way. I couldn't stop thinking about what happened or I just felt like I couldn't breathe. And the grief response they have is typically expressed in physical cognitive or behavioral ways. And it looks a lot more like they're doing stuff or they're taking action. Mm -hmm. You're listening to Life on Rehearse, uh, Matt Del Vecchio here and uh, with Corey Sirota, who is on the other side, <laughs> being the one interviewed today, because we are talking about the d differences about how uh, men and women uh, deal with grief and loss. And I want to talk about society and how it plays a role. But Corey, Many people have asked me, and I've asked you off air, I've seen this, as you know, I work with a, a lot of seniors, um, and I've seen it time and time again, and maybe it's just me, but <laughs> it seems if a man, uh, for example, his wife dies, right. um, it seems that the man will tend to find or want to find, I'm doing air quotes, a companion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whereas if a woman and she, her husband dies, I see um, not so much of that. I see much more uh, staying independent, having a group of friends. So is there, is that just me seeing that? Or is this true that men and women, uh, uh, when they, they lose a spouse, they, they react differently? I, I would say you're not imagining it. It's absolutely true. The research will tell you that 50% of men will find a partner companion within two years of wow. having a, their partner die. Whereas women don't feel as compelled to go out. That's again, we're generalizing, but typically women don't feel as much, as much compelled to go out and find a partner. Why? That's the important thing to understand mm -hmm. is because women make connections and are, can have intimacy, have these girl, best girlfriends and all this kind of uh, discussions and talk and support. They're much more verbal women. So they'll talk about it more. Whereas men tend to uh, kind of, they can, they're very, very capable in many, many areas. But when it comes to intimacy, communication, it's usually with their partner. So it's the only person that they tend to connect with in that way. Not, and I'm not even talking about Am I allowed to say sex on the air? I'm not <laughs> even talking about sex. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the connection that men will have with their partner. And, uh, and so what they, they don't have that in other ways. Guys go out for a beer. Guys go play soccer, but women chat. And again, stereotypes, guys. So I know it's not always the case, but for the most part, that's why is they need that piece is hugely missing in their life. Hmm. Very interesting. And, and, uh, so um, it is true what I'm seeing. You're kind of backing yeah. it up scientifically. And again, there are stereotypes and, and we are generalizing. But yeah, it's interesting how that works out. Um, I do want to talk about how society plays a role in how one grieves, Corey. So both society and culture actually play very important roles. And this is what we need to understand is going back to how were little boys and little girls, what kind of messages did, did they receive as they were growing up, particularly about grief and loss and how you handle it. So for example, boys get messages like you must keep a stiff upper lip. You're, they're taught to be, in order to be a man, you must be strong, face the difficulty straight on. And they're very discouraged from expressing vulnerability things like men must be in control at all times. Their role is to keep people, protect their children, protect their partners, keep them safe, which we cannot always protect them from, and be ready to overcome any challenge. Whereas girls, it's okay to cry. They should be expressing themselves. They're typically known to be more mature. And so it, when they have these messages, and you feel, you don't feel like you fit into that mold. There's something called dissonant grief. And that's because the way you feel and the way you act are not in, uh, mm -hmm. in conjunction with each other. So society does play a role in helping reinforce the ways right. in which boys and girls grieve. Interesting. Um, you're listening to Life Unrehearsed with Matt and Corey. And Corey, we want to, uh, we need to head out to traffic, as you know. And, uh, but I, I want to um, be able to address some of 
the support, uh, what we can recommend to people. And we're also going to be bringing on Gary Sturgis after the traffic um, update because we want to get a male perspective from a grief and bereavement specialist. And uh, we're going to hear from Gary. Uh, but first, we need to head out to the CJD Traffic Center. We're going to hear from Hello. Jill. And welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. My name is Matt Del Vecchio, And we're talking about how wim- women and men grieve differently. Actually, quite fascinating. Um, before traffic, you might have heard me interviewing Normally, my co-host, who is on the other side of the chair today, Corey Sirota, grief and bereavement specialist, and we want to bring in a male perspective, and we're very happy to have on the line Gary Sturgis. Gary survived the greatest loss of his life and now works as a grief specialist, speaker, and bereavement facilitator, guiding and supporting others in their struggle with grief. Gary finds it a gift to be able to help others navigate their way through the maze of grief in a very personal and meaningful way. He's also the author of Surviving, Finding Your Way from Grief to Healing. Gary, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. Hi, thank you, Matt. Thanks for having me on. Well, thank you. And and uh, I know Corey's excited to have you on the air as well. You're presenting at an upcoming workshop we're going to hear about in a second. So, Gary, we're guys here now. we got to hear uh, the male perspective. So how do you think your gender impacts the manner in which you grieve? So I think, you know, on an intellectual level, I think grief is grief. But emotionally, I felt very alone in my own personal grief journey after my loss. The reason being that I was in a support group where I was not only not only the only male, but also the only member of the LGBTQ community, sometimes I didn't feel like I fit in. And it was very difficult to sit in a room full of women who were talking about how blessed they were to have the support of their children. I had no children, so that made me feel even more alone. That's one of the reasons I've created a grief support group specifically for the LGBTQ community, because what every griever needs is a feeling of validation, acceptance, and support. The LGBTQ grief support group I created is designed to focus not only on the importance of support, but finding the right support. Yes, you know, and and, and, uh, um, it's very interesting you bring that up because I think it's so true where there's the traditional standard grieving uh, uh, support groups and you bring that extra, extra dynamic to it. So, uh, Gary, let's talk about the role that you think, if any, your gender played in how the people around you provided support. Well, I think, you know, overall, I don't think I was treating it, treated any differently as a man. But there were times I didn't feel that people could relate to or understand my loss. And I think, you know, being a member of the LGBTQ community can sometimes put an added twist to the grieving process. So I often felt that my grief was marginalized. People sometimes made me feel that my relationship with my spouse wasn't as valid or as important as theirs, if that makes sense. It does, and I'm very sorry to hear that that was your experience, that there's a term you and I have talked about, it's suffocated grief, and it's grief that goes unrecognized and punished, in fact, and that sounds like what you were experiencing. Exactly. Um, Gary, you know, similarly, you heard uh, Corey beforehand, and uh, Corey supports a lot of support groups, as uh, do you as well. So what has been your experience with gender gif- differences in grief with these support groups? Well, I believe grief is so fluid and also so unique to each individual based on their relationship with the person they lost, regardless if it's a male or a female. I think men tend to express their grief in a more physical way than women do. They go to the gym or back to work or they're out in the backyard chopping wood. Women aren't afraid to share their emotions, and I think this is why the majority of the members of the support groups I facilitate are, in fact, women. There are exceptions, but I've found this to be the case in most of my groups. Uh, so, Gary, I, I know you are, this is going to be hard for you to be succinct and concise about this because there's so much you can offer, but what advice would you offer someone who's struggling with their grief process because it doesn't align with the way they think they should be grieving? Well, I think the grief process takes as long as it takes, and it's different for every loss and unique to the relationship that was lost. I mean, grief changes you forever, but you can learn to let go of the pain and not necessarily the person. I think regardless of gender, if we all, you know, we all need to own our grief and share our stories. They're all different and they all matter. You have to realize that everything they did to you and the experiences you shared is, is what you 
and it's what you miss. Only you know how you feel about that. Nobody else can know what's best for you. There's absolutely no right way or wrong way to grieve, and there's certainly no rules for how to do it. So how you're doing it is the perfect way for you. Yeah, absolutely. Listening to Life Unrehearsed, Matt Del Vecchio here with Corey Sirota, and we're talking about how men and women grieve differently. And we have grief and bereavement specialist Gary Sturgis on the line. Um, just before traffic, we actually had Corey as our guest. And Corey, I'm going to bring you back into the conversation. And Gary, I'd love your input as well. But first, Corey, you know, you are the specialist, but I think you can give such uh, advice, words of advice and wisdom. For people, what is or what are best practices in supporting grieving people? So given that we have been talking about gender differences, I want to be very crystal clear here. While there absolutely are gender differences in grief uh, for people at, at varying degrees, it's really less about gender. And more about, as Gary was talking about, more about who that person is and what they need to help them navigate the grief process. So I want to, even though we are talking about gender differences, I actually want to say, don't look at it in terms of gender differences. Look at it in terms of the person. And you know my thing, I just said it to you, as long as it's not illegal, immoral, or dangerous, you go for it. You do it because according to somebody, you're doing it wrong. So you might as well do it the way that you need to do it. That would be my, and it always is my advice. Yeah, so I think that's a good point. Yes, there are differences in men and women grieving. However, when it comes to supporting and best practices, you be you. And and yeah, um, you do you know, you. there's not that magic formulation. Gary, would you? I'd love to get your opinion on this as well in terms of supporting grieving people. Yeah, I, 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 found, it in, I found it interesting that, you know, during the COVID pandemic, we were unable to have support groups, you know, live support groups. We were doing a few Zoom groups, but... Up until that point, I've been, I've been doing bereavement support groups now. I've been facilitating them for over seven years. And this was the first time after COVID that I actually had, out of 12 participants in my group, four male participants. And I thought that was really interesting. And the first comment that one of the women said was, she said, oh, men grieve and women leave. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And she said, well, men don't grieve. Men just move on, and we can't do that. So I found that really interesting. And, and, and like Corey said, I don't think that, you know, there are any rules on whether you're a male or a female. I think every, and what I'm finding is that these, these particular four men in my support group are grieving just as, as much as the women, you know, and I think, you know, some of them, one, one gentleman came up to me at the end of the group and said, you know, I'm really sorry I don't talk, but I am listening. And I said to him, you know what, sometimes the person in the group that's not talking and is listening is actually getting the most out of the group. Yeah, and Corey, I've even heard you mention that as well. Such, a, you know, I really appreciate both your perspective, female and male perspective, on this uh, intriguing topic. Gary, I want to thank you very much. Corey, as well. Um, maybe Corey, can you? I know you're both presenting at this workshop. Can you give us a couple more details? Sure. It is being held virtually on March the 10th. You can get information about it. It's from 9 to 12. Uh, there's a small fee for participation. And it also is a bit of an increase if you need uh, professional development credits from the Order of Psychotherapists. And you can find the information. I'll post it on our Life Unrehearsed Facebook page, but it's through Myra's Kids Foundation. And the theme so of the happening. workshop is? Is Gender Differences in Grieving. And wonderful. learning about and having people like wonderful people like Gary and some other part workshop participants who are going to share their stories as part of this uh, program. Great. Very good stuff. Uh, Gary, thank you very much for taking the time here on a Saturday with us. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. All right. That's grief and bereavement specialist Gary Sturgis, who was also on with Corey Sirota. And Corey, we're going to switch gears. You're going to switch gears. And so will I. <laughs> we're going to reverse roles. What do right. we have coming up on the second half? I can't wait. We're talking about aging in place. Uh, that's become more popular, especially during the pandemic. And let's face it, more people are staying home longer. But if you are doing so, you need to make some necessary modifications to your home. And Matt Del Vecchio is going to share with us how to do just that. That's all coming up after our CT, uh, our 3.30 CTV News update.